versus Shadow Garden. Sid's certified Ein's moment, Eminence and Shadow season two cut content from any news. Let's see what he has to say. A new arc means we get yet another fascinating Sid persona. Bro, that mundane man is going way too hard. This this is not mundane at all. This is peak man. But that's right, new persona, John Smith. This time it's John Smith and his mission mm. to sabotage Shadow Garden. But unlike how mundane man and Shadow were limited to certain archetypal characteristics, John Smith isn't limited by anything. Because he's super secret agent too. Obviously, he can't use his slime. Super secret elite agent too. Slime, but other than that, he's free to do whatever he wants. It's the reason we see him use wires to fight here. So, aside from the whole Well, the wires, I feel like it's just fan service. Because whenever you see wires in anime, it usually means girls are going to get tied up by it. And they're going to get their clothes slowly ripped off by it. That's the immediate thing I just came to conclusion when I saw wires. Like, oh yeah, fan service incoming. Like credit crisis brewing in the background. It's John Smith and his ability to experiment with different fighting styles that really makes me hyped for what's to come from this part This of is the really anime. cool though, yeah. All of which we'll talk about in greater detail in this episode of Cut Con. Like, if you just look at the light novel content of, like, this Yukime and John Smith and Discover, like, would you ever think that Eminence of the Shadow is this kind of show that you know? Fuck no, right? Cause it's a meme anime, but, like, look at this art! <laughs> oh my god! Content. Let's get started. Episodes 24 and 25. The Mask of Falsehood covering chapters 4 to 6 from volume 3 of the light novel. If we start things off here during the post credit teaser from after the Blood Moon arc, this was a private meeting supposed to be- I'm so happy Yukimi's back. I thought she was just done after a lawless city. That's one of the things I was kind of disappointed, because like, no, we just got introduced into these characters. No, don't end it now, but Yukime carries over. Taking place at the White Tower, the primary location Yukime tends to reside while in the lawless city. Shadow was Yukime's guest and does thanks- Again, how the fuck is she gonna wipe her ass, bro? I'm telling you, man. There's shit stains on this tail. She cannot fucking wipe her ass like this. Maybe she has a bidet though. For having saved her during the fight with the Blood Queen, she had offered her two assistants, Natsu and Kana, to him. Shadow obviously wasn't there for any of that, so rather than indulge in the women or the wine, he simply <laughs> requested to know what state she wanted your from him. business. I have no time for your thoughts. State your business, fox woman. A question to which Yukime responded by saying his trust. She was willing to offer anything and everything in order to gain it. Since Why does Yukimi want Shadow so much? Other than the fact that he's obviously super strong. Extremely strong. I mean, she immediately recognizes the strength and she says, it's like, oh my dear Shadow. The gifts she'd presented weren't quite good enough though. She instead offered Shadow information. Oh, she's flexing her titties now. What is she grabbing here? Is this her tail? What is she grabbing right here? Is she fucking like stroking her tail for like sex appeal? Mission. Specifically news on the creation of the Anti-Mitsugoshi Alliance. With every major corporation teaming <laughs> oh, up right, against right, right. Mitsugoshi, the ensuing war was sure to leave openings for them to strike. Openings that the two were hoping to capitalize on. As for why Mitsugoshi was such a threat, well, with innovative products of the utmost Who the fuck is gonna be able to compete with modern world products like fucking makeup, lingerie, business attire, right? Mitsugoshi is going crazy. No one can possibly compete with quality, this shit. Even if every merchant was to even fucking plates and bowls, we're just giving them everything. Band together and compete against them. That still wouldn't be enough to gain back all the market share that they've CGI lost. character, CGI. There wasn't a coalition of merchants large enough that could ever even hope to stand against them. As for a coalition of companies, well, that I have a feeling. Like wouldn't it be hilarious? We haven't had a ball joke in a while. I hope this is a fucking toupee and this fucking falls off when it just stays and it actually falls inside. And if that happens, I'll be there to fucking scream, BALD! Be different. At first, they didn't see Mitsugoshi as such a threat, but after the monopolization of several industries, they'd finally banded together to create the MCA. Garter had resolved all competition and brought everyone together under a single banner. That being the case, the group of bandits we see hijacking the carriage at the beginning of the episode was actually Garter's MCA? private army. Yeah, a MCA. militia of privately contracted Dark Knights whose power was equivalent to that of a small nation. It wasn't rare for Dark Knights. A small nation? That's kind of crazy, because, like, we just took them out so easily, but then we are Shadow Garden. We're beyond that. Knights ...to fall out of their order and turn to a life of crime, but for this many to join together and create their own army, well, that was something that almost never happened. <laughs> it's a Yotsuma, bro. It's a Yotsuma, dude. <laughs> look, look, look. Create their own Ready? Army. Well, that was something that almost never happened. This is him right here, bro. Uh, beside Kakashi, dude. Right over here, dude. This is him. The first leaf, the strongest member of the Yotsuba, bodied by the weakest member of Shadow Garden. It just went to show how much money and influence the MCA had. 
the rest of the hijacking was pretty much the same, so now we can get to Sid's first appearance as John Smith. A funny thing to note about his outfit is that it's actually a Mitsugoshi knockoff. Of course! Oh, it's a knockoff! Okay, I was gonna say he just fucking stole it from Gamma's like a wear. He just like took a cool suit. Created by Yukime's Snowfox Corporation. Oh, he has a corp too? Cool. A legitimate business operating outside the lawless city whose sole purpose is to rip off and sell Mitsugoshi <laughs> products. Really? They just straight up just copy our shit? Come on! I mean, kind of smart. It's kind of smart. Just copy people. Yeah, fucking do it. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm doing right now. But W Grind, that's right. It's like me reacting to an anti news video. I'm just leeching. Yukimi's leeching too. Let's They're go. They're actually the leading authority on plagiarizing them. That doesn't mean they've been able to replicate everything, though, since a lot of Mitsugoshi's products are just too technologically advanced for them. The level of engineering coming from Ida is just wait. Just waiting for the next iPhone to be announced for Mitsugoshi, man. Too superior. That said, if a company like Mitsugoshi was to operate in the real world, their dominant takeover of the market would certainly violate antitrust laws. Ah, we don't For have that here. Don't know what that is? These are rules set in place to help encourage competition. They're regulations that ensure no single entity can establish a monopoly. Yeah, because like you know what's because if you have a monopoly, then no one can compete, right? And all these bigger dudes just eat up the smaller fish. And in Canada, instead of a monopoly, we have like an oligarch of like we have we have like a bunch of corporations that just like. We have like three entities that just control over everything. There's like no competition. Clearly, Mitsugoshi has done just that, so it only makes sense that something like the MCA would form because of it. Now, where Sid goes to meet Yukime for all their other meetings is a private residence located deep within the forest. Oh? About 30 minutes away from where Sid goes to school, there's a hidden mansion nestled neatly between the forest, a waterfall, and a mountain. This is Shadow Secret? It's place? this serene location that makes for a very aesthetic hideout. One in which the two can plant things together. What? Yukime typically tends to start things off by trying to seduce Sid. But you slut! That won't be needed. Oh, you don't like that kind of thing. After getting denied, it's... It is kind of impressive how Shadow never gets faltered by, um, like, flustered by fan service. Like, like you know, like, the characters right now we're watching, like, for Issei, for example. Is if Yukime is here, bro, like, Issei's on this fucking ground just licking her toes. But, like, Shadow has never simped. Not once. He doesn't give a shit about anything like that. He's too busy with Chuni. Then again, didn't Giga make the joke of something like, he's so strong, he won't lose his virginity? Always business. So, there was all that stuff about Mitsugoshi and the MCA, but what wasn't included was a visual representation of why Yukime wants to be the one to kill Geten. She mm. doesn't tell him about her. Straight up, right? Because Geten gave, um, killed Yukime's parents, who we saw in the flashback last episode. But also, Geten also got a scar on his back. I think, no, 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 Getan has a scar in his eye, I think. But in this scene, there's also, I thought it was just like Yukimi versus Getan. No, 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 no. There was another person. Stylish Bandit Slayer was also here, right? Style, Stylish Bandit Slayer was straight up just here at the same time. I, I'm pretty sure for a fraction of a second, we saw that happen, right? Her past just yet, but she does remove her robe and show oh. Sid all the scars on her back. Damn. It was this inflation. If he's a blind swordsman, he's probably one of those super crack swordsmen too, you know? Those blind swordsmen, like, they can see better, man. Linked mess that was solely because of Geten. For a bit more context on how this happened, well, it was apparently from back when she was a child. Back before she had matured into the nine-tailed fox that she is today, her and her mother lived this simple, happy- So that's why she only had one tail, okay, so I guess they grow more tails as they mature, okay. ...life in a remote spirit fox village. Since her mother was one of the stronger three-tailed foxes, it was only natural that she make her living by hunting. It was one of those days that she was out hunting, though, that something would happen which she refused to elaborate on. What do you mean? Something I'm sure we'll find out more in the next episode. Okay, it's spoilers, being, spoilers. That's all we know so far. Yeah, but right in this, when her eyes going blurry, Stylish Bandit Slayer was there, man. Stylish Bandit Slayer, okay. Yukimi is going over to Getan, but Getan is going after Stylish Bandit Slayer. And John Smith doesn't give a fuck about any of them. Fast forward to Sid's self-proclaimed NPC shopping event. Scale, what the fuck are you doing, bro? And that's when we get to our first introduction with the paper money. Unlike how it is with our society, though, these paper bills here are nothing more than vouchers for real money. Since the Kingdom of Midgar is primarily a coin-based economy, there are still many stores and merchants who don't trust this paper money resulting in a society in which it's considered common courtesy to ask for permission before using said paper money. Oh. At first, Mitsugoshi was the only place anyone could use paper money, but after offering free gifts and discounts to <laughs> the those lingeries, who did, bro. the amount in circulation quickly grew to the point it was common to find it everywhere. 
It was an aspect of knowledge Sid had given the girls when they were younger. And this is the hyperinflation that's gonna happen. Once his recollection of that information started to get a bit shady though, Sid had simply told them to figure out the rest themselves. But you can't. These are three children. How the fuck are they smarter than a fucking hedge fund? Like, what are you fucking talking about with this anime? You don't have to go that deep. He had left them with what's essentially an incomplete understanding. I feel like these are CGI characters here. ...ending of financial systems. Regardless, the introduction of their own currency was enough to get the MCA to do the same. If they didn't, then Mitsugoshi would have established yet another monopoly over one of the most powerful markets in the world. The key question the MCA... But right now, we're about to establish a stronger monopoly than everything before, because once Mitsugoshi and MCA both collapse, the one that rises is going to be Shadow's Monopoly. I wonder what the name is going to be for this new company. MCA needs to ask themselves then is, how well do they understand just how dangerous money creation can be? If they don't, then anyone can- I mean, most people don't understand, right? We just like, just print more fucking money. Who cares, bro? Just fucking- It says paper, bro. What do you mean? Just fucking give me more money. Just print that shit, but it's- very dangerous. Hyperinflation. The value of your money can decrease so drastically. Economic collapse. Everything you know as society can just fucking go like that. But that'd be kind of fun, wouldn't it? Step in and create a credit crisis. The core topic of this third meeting here with Yukime. Sid does well to explain the concept of credit creation, but what Yukime means- I don't know. I feel like this kind of topic of economy, money, hyperinflation, credit creation, it's kind of- Difficult to understand, it's definitely not intuitive because when people think about money, just like a paper bill, they just know that it's like a $5 bill. But it's like, why is it worth $5, right? They don't teach you this kind of shit in school. It's like, who is to determine that this is a $5 bill and this is a $20 bill? Well, obviously they're different shapes and colors, but back in the day, shit used to be just bartered. You trade stuff for value. I have a chicken, you have a cow. I want some milk from the cow, I will trade my chicken eggs for that cow into the exchange of value. These paper money, they have no inherent value. Unless you really believe in it. Obviously, they're backed by gold. That's another concept that I'm not smart enough to explain, of things being backed by gold. But this credit creation, this money, the, the concept of money is actually fucking insane if you think about it. When she refers to a run on the bank is the idea of everyone with paper money rushing CGI characters. back into coins. Since the banks had given out more bills than they have cash on hand, the immediate influx of people wanting to get their money back would make it so the bank couldn't cover the amount that people Print were asking. Print the fucking money bills! It would effectively make all that paper money worthless and yep. as a result send the bank straight into bankruptcy. It was as Yukime was explaining all of this that Sid would have his first certifiable Eins moment. <laughs> Is that what you think? He would come out of this conversation with the best plan possible, all while looking like he himself was the one who had come up with it. It was a hilarious moment that reminded me of Demiurge and Ainz. More references I won't get, but soon. Soon, guys. Overlord reaction on this channel soon. Part of the reason Yukime believed that Sid was testing her here was because the insane aura Sid was emanating <laughs> made really... it seem like Sid had enshrouded him. Bro, look! The cup even cracked at the pressure of John Smith. Do you really think so? <laughs> himself with magic. When Yukime realized that this was actually just his willpower incarnate, she quickly understood that he was testing her. His oppressive presence clearly made it seem like she was missing something. Bro, these misunderstandings now, are the since best. the main concern of making count Actual fucking money off. printer right here. Let's actually go in bird. Look at the this. The whole mission was pretty much this race with the MCA. Sid and Yukime had to send them to bankruptcy before they could be found by them. That being the case, if they were to run the operation from the lawless city, then that combined with John Smith actively thwarting investigations would surely give the two enough time to win that race. It was an idea that left both Sid and Yukime with a good idea of what needed to be done now. So, with their parts now set in this genius plan, a core component for Sid was making sure that Alpha didn't find out. Mm. You see, if she- And this is the main conflict, right? She's gonna be the main person that's gonna get in her plan. And in the trailer, we saw, you know, John Smith fighting Alpha. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? I'm like, we're abandoning Alpha? What's going on? It makes a lot more sense if now. If any of the others found out what his role was in all this, then everything he's doing to rebuild Mitsugoshi would be for nothing. Luckily for Sid, that just meant that he couldn't use his sword anymore. Since that was obviously a core part too of the recognizable. Aesthetic, yeah. all he needed to do instead was- And apparently these strings are also not slime strings because they would be too identifiable. I thought it was- they were slime strings, they're not. Just implement other fighting styles. Bro, Oriana's titties look so much bigger here thanks to these strings. <laughs> oh my god. 
I just realized, bro, if Epsilon comes to fight too against John Smith and we use the string on her, what if her titties just like straight up gets sliced and get falls off? Oh my god, that's gonna happen, isn't it? Oh my god, no! Something that he was eagerly looking forward to. The next scenes with Delta were pretty much- Okay, these Delta scenes are adorable. Oh my god, she was like barking on the side like an actual pet at your dining table. Oh my god. Same, but when it came to the hunting of bandits down in the sewers, it was actually deep in the forest far away from the city. And this was the one thing Sid knew that he'd never have to worry about oh no. with Delta. A coffee the way shirt. she concealed her presence was the best out of anyone, and her ability to sense prey was even better than his own. It didn't matter how much she tried to boost his senses with magic, the difference between him as a human and her as a Therianthrope was simply too much for any amount Again, of magic to overcome. Again, more just- more- more fact that she's just a certified hunter, right? Her smell senses everything, it's too OP. She can track everything. With the exception of Delta's intellect, she truly was the physically strongest- <laughs> That was a very kind way of saying she's really stupid. <laughs> one more time. One more time. Of Delta's intellect, she With the exception of Delta's intellect. She truly was the physically strongest out of anyone. She is very strong, so yes. With her acting as this makeshift bandit radar, she would lead the hunt as they ran through the forest and eliminate what was essentially the hardest and most time-consuming part. The good part was obviously the hunt itself, but the instant any prey were spotted, they Shadow's would already be killed by the time Sid could get there. Waiting just wasn't something Delta was capable of. Like it's a dog! she wouldn't if she was ordered to, but in the rare instances where that does happen, the actual act of waiting is known to cause her stress. Man, these Kagejutsu moments look so cute. We gotta watch that too, man. So much so- She's just straight up like a dog. She just can't wait. She's just like giving him about a treat. Like a bad trained dog. Yeah, no one trained her, man. But at the moment Sid's not around to watch her anymore, she would usually go mount Gamma, chop down a forester- The fuck do you mean mount? Eat all the vegetables in a random- Chop down a forest or eat all the vegetables- Farm somewhere. <laughs> She's a fucking menace! She's just destroying everything! If that was how Delta acted back when she was a child, Aww. Sid definitely didn't want to see how she really- Oh, look at child Delta, so cute, covered in blood! <laughs> her stress now. It's the reason he didn't tell her to wait here at all. When she stopped for a random grunt calling her- Oh, what's up, big bro? It's time to kill you. Delta bullied Gamma because she's weak? That's fucked up, Delta. Name, the fact that she did was all the more surprising to Sid. It was as if the impossible was just made possible somehow. When that grunt revealed himself to be her brother, Damn. there was actually a few tips. The brother was pretty jacked in the anime. The brother here actually looks pretty weak in the manga. Bits of information that the anime didn't include here. The first was that Delta could have been chief if she wasn't a woman. Really? The second was that Getin was so strong that even their dad couldn't beat him. Re so he's from the same trap. So I made the guess that Getan was Getan like Delta's dad or something, but no, no, no. They're kind of from the same tribe. And the third was that Getin was the strongest swordsman of all the wolf clans. Wolf clan. The We're Delta's a wolf clan, right? Same clan? The interaction then ended with decapitation, and Sid's only thoughts were of how Therianthropes were true to their might makes right motto. As Still pretty fucked that she just straight up killed her big brother and said, you're so weak, you don't need to exist. And you know what? We can just replace you with more babies. Hey, master, want to have more babies? It's a species in which at least 80% believed that. No, different. It's a wolf clan versus dog clan. I thought maybe Delta is also part of the wolf clan. The strong were made kings and those good at hunting respected. All because strength was pretty much the only thing that they had going for them. Their physical capabilities were outstanding. Their senses sharp and reflexes great. <laughs> then their magic... I forgot she fucking blocked his sword with her fucking nails like that's crazy. And Bankai. And their Bankai. If it wasn't for their lack of intelligence, Sid truly believed that Therianthropes could have taken over the world by now. You see, yeah. it's because of that same might makes right philosophy that these beast folk were incapable of ever conquering outside their forests. Every time their population went up to the point that they could, Another case of infighting would bring their population right down again. Oh, Sure, just, there was the occasional hero- They're just culling themselves. Their main opponents are themselves. Who would unite all the tribes and lead them on this grand expedition, but oh? every instance of that- Wait, 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 what? The occasional hero who would unite all the tribes- Not oh, that it was actually hinting at some other character that would actually do that. Tribes and lead them on this grand expedition. Yeah, they're straight up too dumb to unite. But every instance of that has led to them always- Wait, this is Mushoku Tensei! Somehow. This wasn't because they were losing the fights, but was rather because they would always stretch themselves far too thin. Every battle was always this absolute victory, but because the strong never wanted to stop, 
they would always extend beyond the reach of their supply lines that so they're just always going for the next thing going for the next thing and, and they're able to manage themselves they do a lot of infighting they touch opponents maybe they shouldn't touch and because of that they just you know they can't rule the world and lack of intelligence and eventually retreat back home after getting hungry enough. So, setting aside the few exceptions such as Yukimei's Intellect. spirit foxes, the beast folk were a rather predictable species who truly follow their might make. Yeah, I mean, but look, the, the wagon, the tails, she's got her entire personality, just like, you know, the dogs, they can't hide their expression, right? It's, it's cute. It's right instincts. Now, with regards to who Zabra was, aside from being Delta's brother, he was also the newest member of Getin's top four soldiers. The Bro was top four. Clovers as he personally. Wait, he was one of the Yotsubas? Well, I didn't know. Oh shit! Big Bro was one of the Yotsuba. That's kind of sad because we took out the first leaf, you know. Okay, the Yotsubas are a fucking joke. He likes to refer to them as. The news was quite the shock for Geten, but what was more of a shock was the little progress they were making towards hindering the Mitsugoshi group. They did manage to prevent all traveling salesmen from carrying Mitsugoshi products or currency anymore, but that rural market was a much smaller scale than that of the urban one. Even if Mitsugoshi was trying to break out into the countryside, cutting them off there had little to no effect on their overall revenue. The foundation the they'd built in the capital was just too strong here. So much so that Getin knew that he'd have to try more forceful measures. It's crazy that someone like him, like another beast man that I would assume is fucking dumb, is kind of really smart here. So, when we get to the invasion with the These other fucking clovers, idiots again. It wasn't Kai and Omega who had gone to <laughs> Look at Kai and Omega, they're like, "Oh no, shit's about to go down." And even before this, right? Alpha ignored Gamma twice, right? Yeah, Gamma was like, "Alpha sama, please let me handle this." And you're like, "Ah, shit, do we want to do this? I don't know, guys." Support Gamma, but instead just knew since she alone was more than enough. The fight itself was <laughs> <much> perfect, <laughs> but what I will say is that Gamma loved to make up excuses. <laughs> Every time she tripped, she would just comment on how good Clover One was at capitalizing on her openings. Uh, of course, so you saw me take a big swing, then took advantage of that brief opening to sweep out my legs and use Akida to- No, we weren't even around you! You just tripped ten foot away! And you would then eventually cut off his exit, so when faced with the choice- What the f- Oh, what's ahead? Jesus Christ. ...of fighting newer running past Gamma, Clover One knew the only logical option was Gamma. Beastman ain't that dumb. Delta is just special. That's a very kind way of telling Delta that she's very dumb. Again, another Asura moment from Gamma, bro. What is this? She's a god. At the very least, everything about her was predictable. The fight would end pretty much the same way that we saw, except rather than Gamma's sword exploding on impact. Bro, what is that? Look at this again. Like, look at Gamma. There's like a triple repeated scene here. Look at this shit. I swear we saw, except rather than Gamma's sword One, two, on three. Impact, That's intentional, right? It's like a meme? I don't know. It had actually just cut him in half right down the middle. <laughs> Both him and his partner's deaths were a lot more reasonable. Oh, he didn't run away. She just straight up tripped and the sword went to his head. Oh my god. Now, a quick thing to note about why this defeat was such a blow to the MCA was because in addition to the Clovers being sent to kidnap and steal... Well, it's because he's the first leaf. You know, he hyped himself up. He's the strongest of the Yotsuba, right? Steel. There was also a rear guard unit who was supposed to report in case the, the mission fuck failed. are these dudes? Since neither them nor the Clovers returned, mm. that meant that- You know, Kai and Omega were really, like, intimidating, actually. Like, when they first immediately fought, like, when Gamma entered the fray against the Yotsuba, the first thing that happened was, like, a gust of wind, and I'm like, whoa, is this, like, aura from Gamma? No, no, no. Kai and Omega immediately bull -roast, bulldozed them, just, like, rushed them down. I want to see them fight, too. That Mitsugoshi's power spread farther than they could have ever imagined. When we get to the next scene with Alexia, this was- What is she do? We actually spent some fucking time on Alexia, man. We st actually spent time with Alexia. What the fuck are we doing training this girl? Is she gonna be important for the future? Maybe, but with the power she has now, she can hardly compete. So like, is she gonna join Shadow Garden? How is she gonna get stronger? You can't just magically become stronger to like, close the gap. Like, what are you gonna do? Something that she had forced Sid to come to. She had- We also saw Iris. We also- Okay. So Alexia forced it to come train. And, but Iris is also looking very depressed and kind of like disturbed and angry and humiliated since the last season, right? Literally dragged him from school straight to the dojo. Also that she could showcase her newfound skills over the fundamentals. Hmm. Sid wasn't really planning to pay attention, but after just one glance, there was this noticeable difference with her. 
clamps. The swordplay he'd initially been quite fond of had significantly improved to the point that it shocked even him. Fast forward to Sid's next meeting with Yukine, oh. and you may recognize this uh, so, location as the. There's like two assistant girls. There's like this assistant girl. Wait. Even him. Fast forward. There's this assistant girl, and then there's the other one with like pinkish red hair. That's like always wearing at the train stop. Forward to Sid's next meeting with Yukime, and you may recognize this location as the underground facility where Claire had once been kidnapped. Oh! Since it was a nice hidden the same place between the capital and the lawless city, Sid knew it would make the perfect base for their operation. Didn't even know that to was the same place. Was the very image of an ideal secret base. So, with the counterfeits being made here, it was upon Sid's initial inspection that he couldn't see anything. That's not to say that he made up the differences. Okay, okay. So people are still explaining to me what actually happened here, but I thought the entire point of can you tell the difference and Sid, John Smith being like, he couldn't, this is a left or right answer. You point out which one is the fake, but he couldn't. He said, uh, what do you mean? Of, of course, it's, it's the, the lower quality one is the fake one, right? Like, can't you tell? And then there was a repeat scene that that would get that. So I assumed that. He just straight up couldn't tell the difference. He's like, I have no idea what I'm talking about. I'm just going to make a bullshit excuse. Yeah, it's a lower quality one, right? But apparently that's not actually the case. Though, because in order to see them, he had actually refined his senses. By enhancing his vision to crazy levels, he was okay. finally able to see the inconsistencies <laughs> with the quality ink and printing. <laughs> okay. It wasn't just stuff he made up that happened to be true. Okay, okay, course, it's real legit. He did makes it a lot more funny, but either way is still fitting to sit as a character. Yeah, I thought he just didn't yeah. know shit, and it's like, which one is the real one? It's like, oh, the lower quality one. The reason Sid knew that someone would be trailing this train specifically was because the he was pulling a Batman and watching the city from atop the clock tower. It was then that he noticed three figures trailing a carriage and as such immediately jumped down to intercept them. As for how Shadow Garden knew to investigate this train, Gamma had narrowed down the list of suspicious trade routes to this one. Smart the Gamma. Reason Rose's squad was the one chosen. To Rose's squad. Rose's squad, okay. She seems like the one that's kind of in like a leadership position in this squad, right? Because there's that girl that's always eating. I'm not sure what this girl's name is. I thought the other girl that's always eating's name is Nami. Is she Nami instead? Anyways, these three girls are actually, we get to see them again because they were in the battle. 664 is the leader. Okay, this is 664, right? This one right here? Because she, she seems to be the very bossy one. To handle it was because her impressive... Okay, so the blue hair, the blackish blue hair girl is Nami, okay. Initiative. I like the one that's constantly eating. She's very chill. Combined with incredible displays of strength had made her team become regarded as pretty strong. Okay! Increasingly off Yo, we're getting the recognition inside Shadow Garden. Our, our faction, all three of us might get promoted, dude. We might become named members pretty soon. Okay. And that they were Maybe after John Smith arc, you know, we do something crazy and these three like rise up the ladder. That'd be pretty cool. We're chosen for a lot of the more dangerous <laughs> missions. This mission would prove to be even more difficult because... Here we go. We're about to see some fat ass titties on display. Ready? The opponent known as John Smith was far Come on, superior show me to it. any of them. A few seconds was all it took for all of them to realize that. He wasn't so much an opponent that they couldn't keep up with. That's not fair. You can't fight him. that moved unpredictably made approaching him near impossible. Somehow, despite only having 10 fingers, the number of wires he was controlling far surpassed that. He had effectively crafted a web. It'd be hilarious if you controlled more of those wires with his thick toes. That'd be too... <laughs> Could you imagine? He just has no feet shoes on. <laughs> no, this is too dumb. Which not a single angle was left open. It wasn't this phenomenal feat of control that was the most worrying, though, since his ability. He just looks so cool. John Smith's outfit, everything from his mask, his hair, his like sleek suit that he stole from Mitsugoshi. No, sorry, it's a Mitsugoshi ripoff. It's a knockoff from Yukimi's brand. And the string, everything about it, the designs of this, it's so sleek. It's so cool. Ability to manipulate space was. E I don't know about, you know, how hyped this character is because we haven't seen enough from John Smith because I think mundane man so far because what he's been able to deliver in the tournament arc, goaded. But if we're talking about just straight up character design aesthetics, John Smith by far. Even more terrifying. I mean, sure, managing Wait, dozens muted. of wires while... Hello? He wasn't so much an opponent that they couldn't keep... Sorry, guys. This is, this is awkward. Up with, but the hard to see Hold wires up. that okay, okay, okay. So we're back, we're back. My, my headphones banked off. We're good, we're good, we're good, we're back, we're back, we're back. Even more terrifying. I mean, sure, managing dozens of wires while predicting their movements was amazing, but what truly set John above the rest was the way that he tying up girls. 
What sets him above rest is tying up girls and showing their titties. Look. Took advantage of that. It Come was on. clear John Show me. Smith's understanding of Oh, a little bit spoilers. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. We know John Smith is going to fight the shade. We know it's 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 all right. Well, I'm, not I'm not looking. I'm not looking. I'm not looking. I'm not looking. It didn't seem to matter how strong, faster skilled he was because the way John fought made it look like he was already 10 steps ahead of everyone. It was as if he was watching the battlefield from above. Taking in exactly how the fight was progressing, then easily predicting what his opponents were gonna do. Oh, I just said it's a spoiler because you know it looks like he's like meeting up with Alpha there. It's like oh, it's a, oh, it's a manga version. Oh, it was Rose. Okay, 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 okay. Next. So as retreat became this increasingly it is. attractive option, the brief pause. Titties, titties, ass, titties, ass. Six four took to the side, led John to go on the offensive himself. You see, up until now, the girls were still Nami fighting. It's kind of crazy to see like these girls in the mask because like they don't wear the mask in the show. I think it's actually better design. You know what? Now that I think about it, it is smarter for them to leave out the masks, even though obviously they're trying to hide their identity and the fact that Shadow's just wearing a hood, right? The, the no mask actually, I think, kind of looks better in my opinion. Like John Smith, it makes sense, but like Nami right here, I, I think she just looked better without the mask. Hang out of his range. They had a pretty good idea of where all the wires were, but they definitely weren't skilled enough to navigate their way through them. Nami is quite flat, though. It was much safer to maintain distance and come up with another plan. It was as they did, though, that another set of invisible wires would restrain all their necks. What none of the girls had realized was that all the wires they'd seen were simply the ones John Smith was letting them see. What? There were countless more, there were more? different lengths and varying thickness. Hold up! All filled with magic and ready to snap their necks. Just seen. Yes, varying thickness. Mm hmm. Ready to snap them, babies. Uh huh. Look at that shit. Just with a single tug. Since that one wire. Tugging, all right. We're tugging, all right. Them, though, Rose knew the only option. Orion is significantly less stacked in the manga. <laughs> Look at her. Out was to charge John faster than he could move his finger. In all out attacks, sent. No one is. No one can compete with John Smith's fingers, man. Come on. Now. around her speed. If not for the hidden wires wrapped around all her other li <laughs> Like, why does she get put upside down, bro? Come on now. Like, come on. <laughs> you tell me the ball positions he could have placed her and just fucking flipped her upside down like this? Come on now. Then, this actually would have been the best chance Rose would have had at winning this fight. It was a choice we know Sid would have made as well. So, yes, it's necessary. Their total and utter defeat, John Smith would simply release them. He didn't toss them out the window like how it was. Oh, yeah, he just, he threw them out the fucking train. This is a moving train. The anime, but instead just That's left fucked them up. And left them with a That's fucked up. Oh, my God, Oriana. What the fuck? Damn, bro. She just dropping like that. Really? Really? For free? Oh, my goodness. He told them not to get involved, and that was it. A scene that I would argue is one of Sid's most disrespectful, since in the end, he doesn't oh, we even see the need to. Did we even get this scene in the anime? We didn't, right? Don't get involved in this matter now. Did he say that in the episode? Maybe it went over my head, but damn, that's a missed opportunity if they if it wasn't in the anime. Was it? A scene that I would argue is one of Sid's most disrespectful. He did say it? Okay, okay, I just missed it then. Okay, okay. But damn, that's pretty disrespectful. Disrespectful for me to, for, to miss that. He straight up said that while throwing them out of the moving train. That's fucked up. <laughs> that is fucked up. Well, since in the end, he doesn't even see the need to fight them anymore. He had defeated them in such a one-sided manner that True. even their will to fight was crushed as well. True. But yeah, that's pretty much Will they rise up to fight back? Will they gain the motivation to go back at John Smith? Shit for those two episodes. John Smith has made his move on Shadow Garden, and I'm excited to see how Shadow Garden will respond to it. Yes. Until then, though, I hope this video was... Another dub video from Annie News. God bless this, man. Every time you post a fucking video, it's just so good for me, man. God damn it. I love reacting to this content. You know, again, more Eminence and Shadow content in this channel. Dude, straight up, the next two months, like November, December, every stream, we will just be reacting to Eminence and Shadow videos like this. If you guys have any more suggestions, please let me know. And, by the way, we do these streams live. Sorry, these reactions live on stream 7 a.m. PST on YouTube. Hope to see you there.